Hi, this is going to be a new video that we are creating just to explain how to create a process turtle diagram whenever you're auditing a process. And we're actually going to incorporate these process turtle diagrams into every single one of our procedures. A lot of auditors just aren't familiar with the process approach to auditing. They think they know what it is. You know, like, oh, I know the inputs. I know the outputs. That's a process approach, right? No. You, you really need to understand how to use these turtle diagrams and how to use the process approach to auditing to help you see the interactions between processes and how to see if your process is effective. So we're actually gonna start incorporating these into every single one of our procedures. And the one I thought I'd start with is the document control process. A lot of people have no trouble understanding process approach in a manufacturing process but when it comes to administrative processes, they get a little bit lost. They're like, well, what, what's applicable here? I, I don't know what these other pieces are because it's not like a manufacturing process. It's administrative and it doesn't involve some of the same elements that a manufacturing process would have, like maintenance and calibration. So here, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a new tool here that I'm going to show you. It's not new to me, but probably new to you. Um, and it's called the Remarkable Tablet. Um, this is the Remarkable 2 tablet. It allows me to actually share my screen real time as I write on it. So, so you can scribbling real time. And now I'm erasing real time. Or I could have just hit um, the undo. That would have been more efficient. And the first thing I'm going to do here is try to neatly draw a turtle diagram for you. And I'm going to number the steps. So the first step is an oval in the process, right in the middle. So that's step number one. And then we have our inputs to the process. That's going to be step two. Step three, we're going to have our outputs. So I, I should probably label these. So I will use a thinner marker for you. Uh, description. Inputs, outputs. I'll make my video a little bigger here for you too. Um, then step four, whoop, wrong, wrong width. That's number four. That's number five. Number six. Number seven. And then we'll switch to the medium again. And I'll give you what our um, number four is. This is with what? This is with who? And how done. And then last but not least, the metrics. So now that I've given you, this is a general turtle, turtle diagram. You can go in this order. It's when you're new to this, it's better to follow this order one through seven. But once you've done it enough times, you won't have to go in order. You'll think in turtle diagrams and you'll be able to jump in and out of order without any trouble and say, which ones have I covered yet? This is only seven. It's not like a regulatory checklist where I have 20 different things I have to remember in multiple different standards, like ISO 1345, 21 CFR 820, um, the CMDR for Canada, the MDR for Europe. I don't have to remember everything. All I have to do is remember the seven and it's the same for every single process. It doesn't matter what it is. They all can use this same seven-step process. So if I want, I can start with procedure, which is step six, how is it done? Or I can start with training, who does it? Step five, or what do you need to do this process in terms of physical equipment and environment? That would be step four, with what? So I'm gonna walk you through the different phases here and I'll describe them as we're going. So the first step is we're going to have the whole entire process begins with a DCN number 
that is assigned in our um, in a log, a DCN log. DCN stands for a document change notice. So this is in um, this is in narrative form. So you're you're asking the process owner, you're interviewing them. So you always want to be interviewing a person, not just reading procedures, not just reading a manual, but actually talking to the person that's doing this. And you start out the interview for the process approach by interviewing the process owner or department head. So how how is the document control process done? Because I'm I'm focusing here on the um, this is document control. So that's the process. And so we have a DCN log. We assign the next sequential number in the DCN log. We fill in the DCN with the procedures that we're revising. We indicate the date that we're initiating this process. We indicate who's initiating it. Um, we'll indicate what the reason is for the changes. Um, we'll indicate what has changed in this DCN. And we'll indicate the approval date when we're all done. Um, so those are the that's the basic process that we're going to follow for the DCM process. Um, and so maybe we could just describe this as the DCM process description. And then what are the inputs into the DCM process? Well, that might come from your management review process. So this is the process that precedes the DCM. Your manager review, you identify changes in processes, and we say, oh, somebody needs to update that procedure. And maybe it's because a standard has changed. Um, a couple of years ago, we had the um, ISO 14971 standard change from the 2007 version to the 2019 version. If you were using the European version, it was 2012. And now they have a new amendment, uh, one that's harmonized for 14971 that I believe is a 2021 amendment. So your manager review identified the need to change and you initiated DCN, which is the process. And when the whole entire thing is done, what are we going to have? We're going to have a brand new approved DCN. Um, we're going to have an archive of an old version. And I'm writing these all in this um, heavy marker. So I hope you can read it. Plus my handwriting's pretty poor. Um, that's why I type. <laughs> And then in addition to that, you're going to have the brand new procedure, you're going to have some training records, and you're going to, to um, have all of this in a, in a package, that DCN package. So here's the training, here's the DCN, here's the old, here's the new, maybe a red line version as well. You might even have a gap analysis. If you're going to do a complete rewrite of a procedure, it's a good idea to do a gap analysis. If you don't... Um, do a complete rewrite, you're only making minor revisions. You just need to make sure you didn't change anything that would affect the applicability and compliance. So um, if you've got uh, in your procedure already places where you've identified what are regulatory requirements, then you know to avoid changing those or rewriting it in a way that would make those non-compliant. The next section, step four, with what? As I said, a lot of people are unsure of how to apply the process approach to anything that is an administrative process because they don't have equipment, um, they don't have calibration, they don't have maintenance. So those are what I'm normally covering in here. You might have process validations. That'd be four different things that I can't really apply to step four, but that doesn't mean there's nothing. Usually with administrative processes, particularly in this digital age, we have software. So a lot of people forget that you have clause 4.1.6 let me try that again, 4.1.6. And that uh, clause is specific to validation of quality system software. So that's different from 7.3, where you'd have validation of software that's embedded in your device or software as a medical device. That's design validation. We're talking about software for the quality system. And it's also not the calibration software either. That would be a different clause in 7.6. So 4.1.6 would be the clause. You could also have uh, a different standard. I believe the number is um, IEC TR 80002-2. Um, I sometimes forget the organization. It could be an ISO standard, but it's a technical report on how to validate um, quality system software. And they give you examples in the back. So if you're not sure, that's definitely the standard to go to. So with what... 
that's really helpful. And you might list that standard as an input also. And, um, or um, it could be in the how done, it could be referenced in there. But uh, you need to make sure that you're covering um, what are the applicable standards for this process. And for the software validation of quality system software, you might have a software tools uh, procedure, a validation of software tools procedure. And that's where that standard should be referenced. I'm just putting it here as an example to help you. So step five, who, with who is, with who uh, are we going to be performing this task? So who are the people that are responsible for document change notices? Who are the people that are responsible for the records? Um, who is responsible for updating the procedure itself? So it might be more than one person. It could be just one person for the entire thing. Some companies centralize it and they have a, a person in charge of document control. And that person is the document document control manager and they do everything. Other companies, they have the each process owner is responsible for the DCN and they're all trained on how to do a DCN and they just have to make sure they follow all the steps in the procedure. So in here, you might have um, multiple people and they might have multiple roles. So depending on what their role is, you don't want to just interview the quality manager that wrote the procedure and knows this inside and out. You want to ask some of the people that do this job day to day and see if they have the necessary training to do this correctly. And then we're going to have the actual procedure here. Oh, I forgot to mention the clause here. 6.2.2 is the clause for training. Um, now, step six, how is this process going to be done? We're going to have a procedure for it. So it's going to be SYS001. That's our document control procedure. We're going to also identify a form 001. That's our DCN form. And then we're going to have two more logs. LST001. That's our master document. Uh, log. And then we're going to have LST002. That's our DCN log where we sequentially keep track of all the DCNs. So you, you go in there and pick the next um, one on the log. Now, the last step is the metrics. A lot of people leave this out of their procedure, but the metrics is one of the best places to identify preventive actions and ways to improve your process. So when you're looking at metrics, um, I think it's 7.2.5 is the clause, I'm sorry, 8.2.5 is the clause in the ISO 1345 standard for how to review, um, monitor and measure processes. Whereas you have another clause, 8.2.6, I believe is for monitoring and measuring a product. So how many products are rejected? How many are accepted? This is for process. And this is where you might say, how long does this DCM process take from beginning to end? How many procedures um, have been, are more than a year old? So you might keep the average aging of these procedures. These are, would be potential metrics that you might have. You might even have a gradient like we do in your master document log that indicates green as being the newest and red being the oldest that needs revision. And there's a gradient from green to red showing you which ones um, are newer and are less in need of changes and ones that are more red that need are more important to update soon. So that gives you an idea of how you create this process flow diagram. I created it in just a couple of minutes here. And most of the time was talking and explaining what I was doing. So you should be able to do the same thing when you're auditing, but we're actually going to incorporate these process uh, turtle diagrams into the procedures for each um, process. So it gives a little bit more value so you don't have to go and create your own process uh, turtle diagrams. Or if you're not sure how to create one, you can look at how we created it and you can create one when you go do an audit. Um, if you have any questions on how to create one, you need some training, or you would like us to do a real example, like you're struggling, you just can't figure out how to do this for a process, hire us to do a single process audit and we'll be happy to show you step-by-step -step how we do the process interaction um, diagram here and how we identify what the inputs are, what the outputs are, what the uh, procedures are, what the metrics are, forms, logs, um, what things need to be checked for um, equipment, validation, calibration, um, any maintenance that needs to be done, as well as training and overall metrics. And of course, the outputs, um, you know, what are the records, where are they located, how long are they retained for 
those kinds of things. So all those things, we look at those same seven things every time. We can go in order. We can go out of order. It doesn't matter once you have the experience. But if you're struggling on how to do this for your process, just hire us to do a, a single process audit, and we'll show you how we do this. And you'll have an internal audit report at the same time on that process. And the best time to do these single process audits is when you've made a change. So let's say you just got a 483 from the FDA, you write up a Kappa, you fix the process to make sure the process is effective, have somebody do a single process audit of that after you've made the changes and everybody's trained and you have a couple of records. That's the best time to do those audits. Uh, another example of when you might do a single process audit is you have a problem at a supplier. So let's say a supplier has a, um, a labeling process and they keep on making labeling mix-ups. Perfect time to have somebody go in there and look at labeling controls for that company. It's part of 7.5.1, but they probably have their own procedure specific to labeling controls. And if they don't, maybe that's the problem right there. But there are specific requirements in the QSR um, and the ISO standard and the drug standards all of them have different requirements for labeling controls. And we know what the best practices are because we've been teaching this and doing this for decades. So we can walk into a company or do a remote audit of a supplier and walk. They can walk us through what they do and we can identify where they're compliant, where they're not, and what they need to fix. And at the same time, you get a demonstration of how to do a single process, process approach to auditing, how to document it, and you're getting a value add here because we're fixing something at a supplier. So if this video was helpful to you, please uh, like it and share it with other people. And maybe your own suppliers might improve a little bit if you shared it with them. So please share and let us know if you have any questions in the comments below this video. Bye-bye.